Actor Clint Eastwood, a man I admire and a self-described libertarian, recently told the Wall Street Journal, quote, the best thing we could do would be to get Mike Bloomberg in there, end of quote. A self-described libertarian promoting Mike Bloomberg, a nanny stater? Are you sure you're a libertarian? A lot of libertarians, you know, like Bill Maher, say they are. Bill Maher, host Politically Incorrect, he now joins us. Bill, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. How you doing, Larry? Good, Bill. Bill, before I get into the statement that uh, got you in some hot water, I have a request, and I, and I mean it, Bill, with all due sincerity. You and I have seen each other around town a little bit. Uh, I've always liked you personally. Um, please tell me why you, can, why you insist on calling yourself a libertarian when you are in favor of affirmative action, you are in favor of gun control, you've constantly railed against Ronald Reagan and George Bush for tax cuts against the rich, uh, you op uh, oppose uh, airline deregulation, you oppose power deregulation, and for crying out loud, you voted for Ralph Nader, and most libertarians I know would sooner vote for Rasputin than Ralph Nader. Please stop calling yourself a libertarian. You know, it's always amused me, uh, Larry, that every other political party is allowed to have a big tent, mm -hmm. but the libertarians, who you can't even define, most people wouldn't even uh, on the street tell you what the word means, we all have to march in lockstep behind Bill, who, cert Larry certain Elder? Things, certain things are not negotiable. You support minimum oh, wage. You support affirmative action. These are not negotiable. There's a Libertarian Party platform. You can go online and read it, LibertarianParty.org. There's a Republican Party platform that plenty of people vote Republican and don't believe half of it. That's what politics there, is in there, America. There are, core, there are core values that you have to have as a libertarian, and one of them is yes, adherence well, to, to Article One, Section 8 of the Constitution, and the things that you want, especially gun control, affirmative action, are absolutely inconsistent with that. You are not a libertarian, Bill. You're a progressive or a liberal. I don't know what you are, but you're not a libertarian. Uh, you know what, Larry, I don't really want to have this discussion right now. Is that okay? So, how does a self-described libertarian support somebody like Mike Bloomberg? Bloomberg wants victims of gun violence to be able to sue gun manufacturers. Families of some of the victims of the Newtown, Connecticut shootings sue the manufacturer, distributor, and seller of the rifle that was used in the shooting. Yesterday marked two years since the shootings at Sandy Hook Elementary killed 20 children and six adults. The lawsuit says the Bushmaster AR-15 rifle should not have been made publicly available because it was designed for military use and is not suited for hunting or home defense. Why can't gun manufacturers be held legally responsible for these shootings? So our Verify team looked into this. Our team went back to 2000 for this one. That's when the Clinton White House made a deal with Smith & Wesson. The Department of Housing and Urban Development dropped the gun manufacturer from a list of lawsuits against the gun industry. In return, Smith & Wesson agreed to multiple design and safety changes. Now fast forward to 2005 in the Bush administration. Our team tracked down this law called the Protection of Lawful Commerce in Arms Act. Now that bill legally protects gun manufacturers, dealers, and sellers from any civil action resulting from the criminal or unlawful misuse of a firearm or ammunition. This is the law in effect today that keeps gun manufacturers from getting sued. The NRA has millions of members. You're taking them on for the first time. Does the NRA represent gun owners or gun manufacturers? Well, the NRA is getting its funding from gun manufacturers. And a lot of congressional uh, people got monies from gun manufacturers. In fact, gun manufacturers are the only manufacturers in the country that I know of that have been granted immunity from misuse of their products or them producing products that they know will hurt people. The Automobile companies don't have that kind of restrictions. CBS doesn't have that kind of restriction, that, that kind of protection. <laughs> wow. Does that mean victims of drunk drivers will now be able to sue Ford and Chevy? And Bloomberg wanted to ban sugary drinks in large containers, an effort that was stopped only at the last minute by a New York State judge. The ban on the sale of those giant sugary sodas, the subject of so much late night comedy, well, that ban has been put on hold. It was a big public health effort by the mayor of New York to help with obesity. And it was supposed to start tomorrow, but today a judge said not so fast. ABC's Gio Benitez tell us why. Today, on the eve of the nation's first ban on large sugary drinks, New Yorkers were bracing for change. One of the last ones. This is one of the last Enjoy ones. Enjoy because it's the last day. And businesses were ready. Dunkin' Donuts would have given you the syrup separately, and you would have had to pour it in yourself. 
Now a stunning reversal, a state judge striking down that ban on sugary drinks larger than 16 ounces, one of the more controversial policies in the battle against obesity. I'm going to just take a little swig off a comically uh, oversized movie theater beverage. It's so hot. Mayor Bloomberg made the ban a health crusade. And however you feel about people smoking in restaurants, and I don't like it either, it ought to be a decision made by the restaurant owners and their customers, not by government. New York has led an aggressive fight against smoking and became one of the first cities to ban it in bars and restaurants. It now touts a drop in smoking rates, but it's not convincing retailers. The New York State Association of Convenience Stores says the notion of forcing licensed, tax-collecting, law-abiding retailers to hide their tobacco inventory is patently absurd. At the Skyline Deli, where a pack of cigarettes can cost almost $14 because of high taxes. And then there's Bloomberg's ban on the use of trans fats in restaurants. A ruling on how French fries are cooked or how cupcakes are baked may not seem like a big deal. But a vote by the New York City Board of Health to ban artificial trans fats at restaurants and other food service establishments could blaze a path for the rest of the country. The restaurant industry is not happy and says the city shouldn't have the final say on what's allowed in kitchens. We don't feel that a municipal health agency should have the power to ban a product that FDA has already approved. While it's not a banned product, health officials say trans fats have been linked to heart disease. They're often found in things like cooking oils and shortening. One reason they're used, they help foods last longer. But nutritionists say the harm outweighs the benefits. This is like lead in paint. This is like smoking in restaurants. This trans fats are bad for your health. So food manufacturers and their customers cannot be relied upon to work this out themselves. And then there's Bloomberg's attempt to restrict the availability of baby formula. And now our third story out front. Mayor Michael Bloomberg and his so-called nanny state. First, he announced a proposal to ban big servings of soda. And now he is taking on baby formula. Starting in September, Bloomberg will implement his Latch On NYC initiative. Why is that a disturbing term? Under this plan, most city hospitals will keep formula out of plain sight to encourage new mothers to breastfeed. Mothers who still want to bottle feed can, but nurses have to sign out the baby formula and explain to them why it's not the best thing to do. Now, this is a quote-unquote voluntary initiative, but so far two-thirds of New York City hospitals have already latched on to the idea. Most public health officials want to encourage women to breastfeed at least for the first couple weeks because the outcomes are better. And if they can do it, that's great. And if they can't, they can't. Uh, you know, our job is we're not making anybody do it. We're suggesting. Oh, so it's a suggestion. You know, like the suggestion that you ban smoking in restaurants. Like the suggestion that you ban the use of trans fats in foods. Isn't it amazing how quickly a suggestion becomes a mandate. And then there's Bloomberg's forcing menus to contain information about calories and trying to restrict the use of salt in foods. First it was cutting out the trans fats, then requiring calorie counts on restaurant menus. Now New York City officials are waging a health war against salt. Every year the levels of salt that we get in our diet is responsible for tens and thousands of preventable deaths and, and billions of health care dollars. Along with other cities across the country, New York is trying to set a national standard for how much salt should be allowed in food. And finally, libertarian actor Clint Eastwood is supporting a man who wants a Medicare for all with a public option. Mayor Pete wants the same thing. He calls it a pathway or a glide path to eventual Medicare for all, because after all, health care is a right, right? Mayor, Mayor Bloomberg, was no Vice way. President Biden right and you weren't a fan of Obamacare? Uh, I am a fan of Obamacare. At the That's beginning, right, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah. Mr. Vice President, I just checked the record because you'd said one time that I was not. In 09, I testified and gave a speech before the mayor's uh, conference in Washington uh, advocating it and trying to get all the mayors to sign on. And I think at that time I wrote an article praising Obamacare. It was either in the New York Post or the Daily News. So the facts are I was the there. Let me finish. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, um, I uh, was in favor of it. I thought it didn't do as, go as far as we should. 
What uh, Trump has done to this is a disgrace. The first thing we've got to do is get the White House and bring back those things that were left right. and then find a ways to expand it. Another public option to having some rules about capping okay. charges. All of those things. We shouldn't just walk right. away and start something that is totally new, untried. The fact that the federal government has followed Bloomberg's lead in banning trans fats and in mandating the information about calories is no reason to have the government do these kinds of things, at least not from the perspective of your typical libertarian. Go ahead. Make my day. I'm Larry Elder, and we've got a country to save. I'll see you next time.